Hello all, welcome to People's TV. In this video we will know how to do mapping in textures and how to add bump displacements and transparency maps. Let's start with texture and bump mapping. For most of the time we just can't use reflection and reflection layer to create a material for an object. Materials like stone, wood, painting, package, sticky back paper and textile can be made by using texture map. I will be using this 4 feet cuboid to show the effect of texture mapping. I have added the brickwork texture from the SketchUp material with the help of paint bucket tool. The material I have added is not scaled, it's a default size of the material. Let's take the length of one brick to be 9 inch and map our texture accordingly. Select the texture you want to map and right click. You will see a list of options popping up. In the bottom, you will see the texture option. Hover over the texture option. Another list of options will appear. From the list, select the position option. You will see a texture mapping option will appear in the screen around the material. Texture mapping can be done with the help of four pins shown in the screen around the material with the color of red, blue, yellow and green. The red pin is used to move the texture image and place it to the starting point of the surface to get a clear uncut texture. Click and drag blue pin to scale or shear the texture. Click and drag yellow pin to distort the texture. You can also change the position of the pin by just clicking on them and then lifting them to desired place. Click and drag the green pin to scale or rotate the texture. Now let's map our textures with dimensions. Let's say 9 inches. Select the surface, right click and go to the texture position. Click and drag the green pin to scale the texture till the brick sizes reaches 9 inch in length. You can see yourself the size difference in the new map texture and old default texture. Similarly, we can change the thickness of the brick with the help of the blue pin. Now we can match the new map texture to the whole model. When we go to the material editor, you will see that the material is already created. You can also add reflection and refraction layer as well and check our render. But to get a realistic brickwork texture, we need depth and bump in the texture. Here comes the role of bump mapping. Although we can use bitmap for most materials of the objects, but some textures like wall surfaces, tile, wood, oil painting, leather and water, which all have the uneven surface, must use bump mapping in order to create them. Now select the material by pressing the Alt button while using the paint bucket tool and go to material editor. Our brickwork material is already selected. Now click the M box under diffuse layer to copy the diffuse map texture from the folder. And convert it into grayscale bump map texture for bump mapping with the help of Photoshop. Our grayscale bump map texture will look something like this. Now go to material editor under maps option check the box of bump mapping. 
click the M box and select bitmap from the scroll down list. Here is the grayscale bump map texture to be used in mapping. Now as our diffuse map and bump map are the same, we must check the important thing that is U and V value under UVW. These values should be same in both diffuse and bump mapping. Otherwise, these two maps will not align correctly. Now, let's do some test renders to see the difference between the materials with the bump map and without them. This is the default render without any bump mapping. With the help of region render, I will show you the difference. Now let's check the render with the bump mapping on. Here you can see the difference in the region I selected. There is more bump coming up in the texture. Now let's increase the bump value to 5.0 and see the effect. You can now see as we increase the bump value, the bump effect increases. Further, we can also increase the bump by increasing the alpha multiplier value, let's say 5.0. Now you can see the region render, the difference between the previous render with the multiplier value of 1.0 and bump value of 5.0. Now let's see the effect in overall render. Bump map is created using the gray scale of the bitmap to set the high and low texture. The bright part of the bitmap is considered as high part and dark is low. The bump map is seen more clearly at the part where the object reflects most of the light. Using a bump map texture to create a bump texture is only a visual effect. It's not the true surface of the object. Look at the edge of the object and you will still see a smooth surface. Now let's understand how to use displacement mapping in textures. Displacement allows you to recreate a texture of the surface by using the black and white image to describe the varying height of the surface. This is very similar to how bump mapping works, but each method does this in a different way. Bump mapping simply shifts the surface according to the image applied to it, without actually changing the geometric structure of the surface. This causes bump mapping to be somewhere limited in its capabilities of representing those surfaces. Displacement on the other hand actually creates geometry that is described by the image. This is done by subdividing the given piece of geometry and adjusting the individual height of all of the faces based on the image that it is describing. The result is a surface that produces much more accurate and realistic output. Using displacement is very similar to using bump mapping. In fact, you can probably use your current bump maps as a displacement maps. Let's use Stone Ashler SketchUp default material for example. Open material editor, go to maps option, check the displacement box and click the M box near it. Now select bitmap option from the pull down list and select the three dot box to add displacement map. It can be same as bump map. Now we should know about the parameters that affects and controls the displacement in the material. In the material editor under maps and in front of M box in displacement, the default value is one. But we can change that value according to our material need. Larger the value, larger the displacement. Another way to control displacement is from V-Ray option editor. But it is important to know that these are global controls for all of the displacement through the scene. The amount value may possibly be the most important value within the rollout as this value will determine the scale of all displacement. Larger the value, larger the displacement. Both maximum subdivisions and edge length will affect quality and speed of the displaced mesh. Now let's do a test render and see. The render here is with the default value of 1.0 in both the parameters that we discussed before. Let's make the displacement value of 2.0 in material editor under maps and see the effect. Now you can see in the render the displacement have increased more and we can see the uneven 3D nature of the Ashler stone work. 
Here is the concrete material rendered with the displacement value of 1.0. You can see in the top of cuboid, the surface is displaced from its position. Now when we make displacement value 2.0, you can see the concrete material is displaced more than before. Similarly, this brick texture can be made realistic with the help of displacement. To get better result, prepare the displacement map more clearly. Now let's understand how to do transparency mapping. Transparency mapping is another method using bitmap to create materials. The difference is that this is using alpha channel to get rid of the unwanted part of the bitmap, saving only the part covered by alpha channel. This is called mask. This is used mostly for creating product logos, stickers and numbers. Many user try to avoid transparency mapping and model the actual object in the same. Although you can ignore the material settings by creating the actual model of objects which will increase both the number of objects in the scene and the file size. The more objects you get, longer the rendering time you would need. Here I have added a material having two diffuse layer. It is to map the alpha channel. Now let's map our skull logo. Go to the first diffuse layer. Click the M box nearby the color. Select bitmap option from the pull down list. Click the three dot box to bring the image you want to map. Keep rest of the settings and values to default in this and click OK. Now click the M box nearby transparency option. Bring the same image used in diffuse layer by using bitmap with the same process as before. Now under texture manipulation, check the box of alpha from intensity to get the actual image we bitmapped. Keep rest of the settings as default and click OK. We should also check the color in both the diffuse layer and the transparency of it. Second diffuse layer will decide the background color of the surface on which we are mapping our logo. Let's keep it white and the color in the first diffuse layer be black. Transparency in both the layers will be same as black. Now our logo texture is not as we need. So let's set the position and size of the texture. You can change the size of the image in Photoshop and other softwares to get the exact size you want in your SketchUp model. Now our logo texture is all set and we are good to go for our test render. In our test render, we can see only the skull part of the textured image is mapped and rest surface is same as the color of the diffuse layer. Let me explain you more clearly. This is the image we took for mapping. Now we don't want the white part of the image in the model when we render. For that, we make a diffuse layer and map it. Let's do more test renders. Before that, let's change the color of the second diffuse layer from white to orange and check our render. Now it is clear in this render, the white part around the skull is gone, only the black skull is there as an imprint, just as we want it. I have created more examples for you to understand the effect of transparency mapping. So next time when you're going to design a logo or adding a text, use transparency mapping instead of using it directly to the model or making the object of it, which will increase the rendering time. That was all about mapping in V-Ray for SketchUp. I hope this video was helpful guys. Join me on Facebook or other social platforms to get connected. If any doubt you have, write them down in the comment section please and also don't forget to like, subscribe and share my videos to your friends. Thanks.